<laughs> Welcome to tonight's episode of Last Call Brittany, the late night talk show that answers the question, are you really drinking alone if you're doing it on the internet? Mm -hmm. As always, I am your host, Brittany Gibbons of BrittanyHerself.com, and aside from my usual co cohort, Jess from RandomBlogDrama.com, we're experiencing a testicle invasion. This Sunday is Father's Day, and what better way to celebrate baby daddies everywhere than to break down fatherhood with them live. So, bringing the testosterone to tonight's panel. First, we have David Binkowski. Hi, David. You want to introduce yourself? Hi, Brittany. Uh, Dave Binkowski. I write at every everyotherthursday.com. I am the owner of an agency called Large Media. I was really looking, uh, or really looking to lose a client, so that's why I decided, decided to come on tonight. But um, I'm also the father of, uh, of three three lovely, lovely boys. So happy to be here. Thank you. Thanks. And next up, we have Mark Pennell. Hi, Mark. Hello. How are you? I am Mark Pennell. I blog very lazily, which means like two, three times a year at Marcastic.com. And I am a marketing strategist with Spoke. Thank you for having me. I'm a last minute edition. Well, we love having you. Do have you birthed children? I have birthed an eight year well, not me personally. My <laughs> wife actually contributed somewhat <laughs> to uh, to an eight year old named Noah. Awesome. And next up we have Matt Colbreth. Hi Matt. Hi everybody. My name is Matt Colbreth. I uh, work in radio. Uh, folks in the Toledo area know me from 1370 WSPD and Toledo's Fox Sports 1230. I also write for the Toledo Free Press, uh, blog on a Tumblr, colby.tumblr.com, C-U-L-B-Y, uh, and also at Matt Colby on Twitter. I have a nine-year-old daughter named Ella. Thank you, and let's hope we have Patrick Lynch. Hi, Patrick. Hi, Brittany. How are you? I'm Patrick Lynch. I used to blog at hockeymandad.com. Now it just sits there reminding me that I pay $7 a month for a URL. Uh, <laughs> instead, I just Twitter every once in a while at HockeymanDad. And I have two wonderful girls 18 months apart. Aww. Nine and seven. Well, almost nine. Well, thanks for joining us. They're almost teenagers. That'll be fun for you soon. Uh, no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to have some boys on the show for the evening. Jess and I have been sort of gearing up to deal with all the um, madness in the room. So first up, why not just go ahead and talk fatherhood? Um, so I think we can start at the beginning, like, you know, like right after the sperm kind of meets the egg sort of situation, because I think during pregnancy, many times fatherhood is sort of like an abstract issue for men, because women are like living up, but the guys are like, yeah, there's a baby in there, and it's going to come out soon, and I'm going to be a dad, and whatever, so was that like, were you guys scared to kind of like be dads the first, like the very first time? I mean, after a couple, it's like nothing, but the well, first the time first, around. The first time, it was kind of like pizza delivery, you know, and you're like, <laughs> yeah, like we totally ordered that, and it's going to be showing up in <laughs> nine months. And, <laughs> and as, a, as a guy, you read the books. You know, there's what to expect when you're expecting for her, and for guys, there's kind of like nothing. So you kind of like just ask what you can do to 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 help. But there's I didn't I was not prepared. You know, was I scared? I mean, the only scary part was actually once we left the hospital, and it's like uh, my wife and I walking out with our baby, and like this is ours. <laughs> like if we, this, <laughs> if we break this, uh, if we break this kid or something happens, this is on us. There's no other adults to help us. So <laughs> that was the scariest part for us. That's actually the worst part of leaving the hospital because while you're there, it's kind of like it's your fault if something happens. But then once you leave, it's like legally your situation. And they won't let you stay either. No. No. No, we tried. They said, no, you have to leave. <laughs> I'm clinging to the nurse by the legs. <laughs> we were already there for three days after the C-section. We were ready to get the hell out. I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> I definitely remember the first one being like, I want to keep the baby in the room and just keep an eye on it and everything. And then by like two and three, it was kind of like, um, this is the most expensive babysitter that I've ever hired, so I'm going to go ahead and utilize the shit out of this, and I'm going to need you to take this baby away as long as you can. <laughs> we like <laughs> the room nursery. service. Yeah. I'm really motherly like that, though. So did you have sort of like an idea in your head, though, like what parenthood would be, whether it be based on, like, I don't know, a TV show or just something that you watch? What do you think, Mark? Did you have, like, kind of this I, Oh, I had notion? an absolutely romanticized version of what fatherhood was going to be like. <laughs> you know, I mean... Movies and television, if this is your, your dad's what to expect when you're expecting, you, you better be expecting to be disappointed. 
It's, 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 <laughs> it's, it's not nothing like, like that. It's not, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I've seen, not that it makes great television or movies, but I don't think I've ever seen anything where at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, you're, you know, up and um, irresponsible for a little human being, you know? I mean, you know that's going to happen. I think going into it, you know that you're going to wind up being up, there's going to be sleepless nights and all that kind of stuff. You're like, yeah, 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 but it's still going to be awesome. It's going to be so worth it. And But you forget that you have to go to work the next day. Well, yeah. the, the part that TV fails at is capturing the rage. That's the yeah. part that... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really doesn't capture that. It just like makes it feel like it's going to be like the Cosby show and you're going to have this kid and you're going to whistle like Andy Griffith down this road. Mm -hmm. with the you're going to wear sweaters. And it's going to be yeah. amazing. Thing, and you, it's actually 0% of those things. You know so. you're going to get the 2 a.m. wake-up call. You're just not expecting the vomit down your back after they wake you up. <laughs> yeah. It's not the vomit that bothers you as much as the when the poo comes out, and it's, oh, oh. no. <laughs> like mustard. Oh, yeah, no. no, that first Dijon. black tar poo. <laughs> that was my very first diaper ever was the black tar oh. in the dark oh, yeah. in the middle of the night. First Initiation. Diaper ever. I'm not a home improvement expert by any means, but you know, <laughs> when you get lemons, you got to make lemonade. So I took that and I retarded my roof with it. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> we had a new yeah. roof, so I was I was still good. <laughs> no, see, I, I, I took one look at that. I'm like, I think our child's dying. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think this is broken to already. But well, Kate had already you're, read. You're the you're the one up there, like googling at 2 a.m. like poop colors, like it's then, like a bus. It's like a school bus, kind of, but also like. I don't know, like if you step on a beetle or something. Like, I mean, it's like there's no way to describe like what poop looks like. You know, where you squash the rear end of a lightning bug. It's kind of like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And speaking of poop, like I gotta ask. So, labor, am I right? How awesome was that for you guys on the other end? Not a day goes by that I don't <laughs> thank. Thank God that I did not have to do that. That my job was just to coach and say, good job and keep going. You're doing great. And then sit down and relax. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I got so lucky. My, my son came a month premature. And from the time she said, I think my water broke. And I said, are you sure? She's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure by the sheer volume of liquid in the bed. <laughs> that's what happened. So we rushed to the hospital, and within an hour of her saying that, we had a child. So there was, wow. like, I got wow. so lucky. And that's why we called yeah. it quits. That's why we decided to have one kid, because I'm like, I will not have lightning strike twice again. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 have the exact opposite. We went in for the, oh, we're going to, we're going to, you know, go in and have it induced. Go in, do the induction overnight. It starts to work, but it doesn't really work. My wife has hallucinations on the drugs to give her to make her sleep. After she gets up, they try to have the baby. It's not coming out. It's starting to lose its blood, so we have to go get the C-section. They forget to bring me into the C-section room. At the end of it, they get the kid out, and they hand it to me. They're like, all right, you can walk back to your room. I'm like, well, my wife's still on the table. They said, no, 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 it's okay. Just, just walk back to the room. No nurse followed me. They just handed me this thing that's minutes old and said, all right, you, you go. You're good. It was the most bizarre, surreal moment of my life. Did you have to show ID or anything? Or I mean, they, they, just <laughs> well, they, already had, they already had me all scrubbed up and in the in the thing and everything, so they knew I was the dead. They just forgot to bring me in in the first place. <laughs> nice. what, my yeah, wife tells yours. me the story. They said, "She says, where's my husband?" I'm like, oh yeah, the father. That's what we forgot. The father. <laughs> what What you don't want to know is for like the first fifteen minutes, there's just some random guy that was in the waiting room that accidentally got dragged in there. <laughs> I was looking for the cafeteria, and there right. had baby. He's out over here. <laughs> I'm trying to get a cup of coffee. What the crap's happening? <laughs> you know, I'm there in the waiting room reading books. And I get to the like, OR and I said, hey, you know, I was in the book and I read this name. Maybe you want to think about Morgan? And she's like, what are you thinking of names now? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think you looked out. Anybody who d I think like didn't have the C-section um, and you were in the room for the actual labor part. I personally declined the mirror, so I didn't. I don't know what happened down no. there. Wait, um, no, the mirror. I have to. I, yeah, um, I, no. I, 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 I'm a kind of. I don't see it. It didn't happen. Kind of guy. So <laughs> I made uh, an effort as we were. It, we had the similar situation where we were. It was a long ordeal, like 5 a.m., 6 a.m., rushed into the hospital. Sucker. And, you know, by that afternoon, you're just like, can we, is there something that can't be done here, you know? And, um, <laughs> you know, you're a doctor, like, you should, <laughs> there's something you can do here. And 
you know, I, I was like, Audrey's screaming and, you know, her mom is, she and I are pulling back on her legs to help <laughs> get the baby out. And, uh, and, and I'm like, well, what's going on down? I'm, I'm a, I'm, I'm a fix it kind of guy, I guess. So I'm like, I can, <laughs> there's probably something I can do here. And, uh, Let's troubleshoot this for a moment. And, and there, was, there was something I could do, which was be traumatized for life. But, um, <laughs> I, I watched and then not only did I watch, uh, that time, but I later with our second child actually, uh, recorded it. So really, whoa. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I've, recorded, I've recorded much worse. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> no, I, I just wanted, we wanted to have it on, 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 uh, on camera and on, on video just as evidence some days because, you know, kids are pretty, um, how do we put it, um, they don't really like parents very much for a long time. So I didn't really <laughs> want to remind them the pain mom went through. We just pull it up and <laughs> pop it in the, uh, in the DVD player and there it is. So. Yeah. Honestly, if they would show that in schools, I bet nobody would have unprotected sex ever, ever. <laughs> they never want to show, like, the real – I think they did that, like, a long time ago, like, when it was, like, the 70s or 80s, and, like, they would show, like, these huge videos with bushes and babies coming out of them. And, <laughs> yeah. You know, but... And you didn't have teen pregnancy back then, and all I'm saying is that now there's a correlation there. There's well, a correlation there. Was, I, think there. there was a, I think there was probably a uh... – uh, a population drop after that. That's why they had to stop. <laughs> when you yeah, had, had somebody it. that looked like they had Bob Ross in a leg lock and a little person coming out of another person, yeah, yeah. people stopped having unprotected sex for a while. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I think it would have worked. Um, and so then also, you guys also hold the key of like this important piece of counter like information of whether your wife pooped on the table, which is like a big fear for women. And wait, that's a thing. Um, it's a thing. Oh, it's a and thing. If you know, you need to take it. <laughs> it's a thing. It's, it's, it's a fear. <laughs> yeah, you need to take it to the grave and just tell your wife that she did it. Okay? I didn't know My she wife did, did not. What were you doing, David? <laughs> I didn't know she did it. I, <laughs> the, the no, because I'm that. not focused on I'm not focused on, you know, not the vagina. I'm like, where is the baby coming out? Not not the back door, so let's not even. I didn't, I didn't well, even realize it. I think when you bear down, the, you know, you're bear, you're bearing down. I, and that's how poop. Comes that's out. a lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah. So. I already yeah. knew how babies were were born, but I didn't know how poop comes out. So. That's, yeah, yeah, it's the same <laughs> exact action. It's like the same thing. <laughs> so, um, I have to ask. A lot of women also have this fear, and it's actually a question that uh, we got via email. So after you watch the baby come out, whether it be, you know, vagina, which, gosh, I didn't think you'd be saying that word the show, but vagina, but or really? stomach hole, um, oh. did it change oh, yeah. the, I know. Is that a hole I'm not sure about? <laughs> or uterus <laughs> incision. Am I missing out on something? Yeah, I guess what I'm wondering. Stomach hole? <laughs> stomach, stomach, gaping stomach hole. Um, did it change the way that you saw your wife? Uh, no, no. Ours no. happened so quickly that you know. I mean, for me, I lucked out. So no. The only thing was, I was standing behind her because I, you know, I'm, I'm like the exact opposite of David. I was at, I was like behind the 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 bed, and they had it propped up, you know. And she was she was kind of laying there, and she just wanted to hold my hand. And on that last final push, I my feet came off the ground because she yanked me up over the back of the bed <laughs> off, <laughs> off of my feet. But but no, I mean the only thing that I learned or looked at my wife differently about was that she's like hella strong. Yeah. Or at yeah. least while giving birth. So. I was impressed. That that was a lot of work, and I I too was the top half dad, so. When I was asked, I said, no, I had the T-shirt that said, don't ask, top half dad. And, uh, yeah. yeah, no, I was just impressed that, <laughs> okay, I'm not going to piss you off. Yeah, I think, <laughs> like, I think a lot of women worry, though, because I'll be honest, if I saw my husband, like, push a baby out of his pee hole, it would give me pause. Well, that <laughs> would give anybody pause. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. 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 To put my mouth on it again. And so I was wondering, like, if you guys had that same sort of issue, you, you know. know the, 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 the thing is, so I guess that since you guys are all tops and I'm a bottom here, uh, <laughs> which is totally not what I want to be on video, but it is now. Um, no, I think, uh, is there, do you look at it differently? I mean, I don't know. I mean, 
Yeah, but not really. It's the the vagina is as a muscle, as you know, that can stretch and 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 can and go back to its original state. So it's not like you're talking about. Uh, it's not like she's walking around now with like Elephant Man and like you know uh, a squid hanging loose or whatever. It should, for a little while, was it a little bit? It, you know, you ever see Faces of Death yes. videos? Yes. Like you can't unsee it. Right. right. Oh yeah, but, there's um, no one doing that. But it doesn't like change you forever in a way that you're like, no, I'd be okay if I saw someone get cut in half by a subway car. Like that would still disturb you, but so you you still you forget. It's like you know the same way the pain, uh, you know, baby fever, and I forgot about how much pain it was and how hard how, how hard work and whatever it was, you forget. And so I don't. When I look at my wife today, I don't think, wow, I remember when. Because you kind of forget, you know. And thanks to this show, you will be reminded this evening. Yeah, but yeah. thanks. <laughs> but thanks Let's to, see who's, see who's pregnant thanks, in about four weeks. <laughs> thanks to here, I probably won't remember. So it's all good. <laughs> well, obviously, Patrick, you didn't have a problem with it. Your girls are only eighteen months apart. Um, That's right. So you were had no problem getting right back in there. Uh, my husband well, either, mine are eleven months apart, so apparently there was no emotional scarring there either. I wouldn't say um, we got right back in there as much it was, oh, we got right back in there already. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> I don't think I don't just as visual as men are though, I don't think that we're like, oh, I could never after that. Like I don't know a guy ever thought that. They're like, yeah, you just go back to having sex. Yeah, divorced so, men. Say we that. just need to get over this because clearly divorced they're not men. hanging on to it. I mean, the guys who like <laughs> right. the guys who are hoping if you're a guy hoping to get a cashmere sweater on Father's Day, then maybe, <laughs> yeah. you're that, maybe it matters to you. But the rest of us, I don't think it does. Yeah, I mean, eventually our, our you're gonna come out of back where it's like, oh yeah, I'm gonna put my thing in that anyway, so screw it. <laughs> <laughs> did the did the whole nursing thing turn you guys off at all or no? No, I didn't have no? any problems with that. No, my wife didn't go to nursing school, so I was all right. <laughs> <laughs> Those dirty nurses. I know. I, I distinctly remember, like my like my husband waking up, like we'd be sleeping, and he's like, "Why is my back all wet?" And I'd been like sleeping, kind of facing him, and it would just be like our entire bed be soaked. So I, I think he was off the boob for a while, but I oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my problem wasn't wasn't with nursing uh, itself. It's it's natural and, and those things. My problem was at, at my, especially our last. Uh, we had two boys that nursed and one that didn't. First didn't, last two did. Our last, I, you know, he's pretty keen, right? So I remember, I don't know, a year in, and he would look at me while he's doing it. And I'm just like, at some point, kid, those don't, you got to go. Like, those are not good. He's taunting you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He was, like, taunting me, like, looking at me, and he would stop. Like, he'd be, like, nursing, and he'd see me walk in, he'd be like, oh. And then he'd start working even harder. I'm like, what are you doing, man? I'm like, <laughs> not cool, I'm like bro. I gotta go. Evolution. That's gonna no, it's mine. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta go. I can't watch this. <laughs> okay, well, so I, I had girls, so there was no issues there. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. jealousy. No, no, no. no the girls, no. <laughs> no. So did I have to ask, did parenthood change your style at all? Like I think after we have kids, moms go like full on utilitarian mode with like wearing clothes that are like wipeable surfaces, yoga pants, like huge diaper bags. I don't know the equivalent of like dad yoga pants. Is that like sandals with socks? I don't know. Did like that change for you guys? Or I mean, you guys kind of lucked out. You have to start wearing pants with more pockets in them. That's for sure. Yoga pants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but really, I, I, at least for me anyways, it really didn't kind of become a different dad thing. It was just like, all right, well, here's what I am, plus I got to make sure this little thing like doesn't die on me or something. <laughs> so you just kind of worked that into everything else you were doing. And, uh, and really, it, it didn't, you know, like I said, it doesn't change anything. You just adapt to what you do in order to make sure you can take care of the kid too. I yeah. like. I used to have really nice stuff, like <laughs> shirts. Why we can't have nice things? Yeah, I, I, I used to have nice clothes, and 
there was a time there where I was just like, you know what, I'm not buying anything nice ever again until these kids <laughs> are, because they just, they, you know, when, it was, when they're babies, when they get older, it's not as bad, but when they're babies, like, forget it. You might as well, I think I wore the same sweats, t-shirt, like, that was like my uniform, and I'm like, I'm not buying new jeans, I'm not buying anything nice, because guaranteed it will get something on it. Like, I just stopped. But now that they're older, my, my oldest is 13, my youngest is turning five in a few weeks. It's a little different now, but I just stopped. I literally have a, there's a general, probably a, uh, not, not a decade, but there's a good, there's a good gap where I'm just like, you know, wearing clothes that look like I'm, you know, coming out of the grunge era, which is actually back in style now, which so it's perfect for me. But. <laughs> that worked out. And that goes for your household stuff too. I mean, like, my youngest is four, and we've only just started buying non-leather couches because they were always wipeable. And, like, having, like, nice techie things around. Like, kids are getting into that way sooner. Like, I don't know if your kids all have, like, iPads, iPod sort of things. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, they live in them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I used to, like, look down my nose like, oh, those douchebag parents giving three-year-olds iPads. And I'm like, where's your iPad? Seriously, because you're bugging the shit out of me. So, um... <laughs> I think we all used to do that. It used to be when you see the kid, the parents who let their kids play the DS like at the restaurant. You're like, "What a right. bad asshole!" Now, <laughs> when your kid gets older and they're in one of those, you're like, "Just put your goddamn face in your cell phone. Just leave me alone." <laughs> and now we realize that, hey, the kid in that 3DS over there, they're not screaming or running around. So <laughs> I you know, to that parent over there. Yeah, and I, I still kind of look at other parents that same way, though. Like, if I see him with her, I'm like, "Oh my gosh, is that the kid?" have his own iPhone, but then when it's when it's me and I'm there, I'm like, this is the only way this kid's going to shut his face hole if I get him yeah. like something to, <laughs> to, to keep him occupied. The key it's is like, to limit the level of technology. We're going out to eat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The key is to limit the level of technology. We finally bought our kid the first cell phone, one of the emergency prepay things, and you know she was all excited. Oh, I'm getting my own cell phone. I'm getting my own. I hand that thing to her. This is like grandma's phone. <laughs> <laughs> See, you know, when Matt, we first started saying that, you're like, limit the technology. I'm like, oh, you only got your kid an iPhone 4? <laughs> 4S, really? No yeah, text, 4S, no data, yeah. no nothing. Right. <laughs> uh, my daughter in third grade this year was required to bring a netbook or tablet device to school, and they actually used it in the classroom, and she was in the third grade this year, so... There's third oh. graders full of iPads Geniuses. and Kindle Fires and communicating and expanding on the education that they're getting from the teachers and they fully embraced it. So now they're now they're all experts. Not enough filtering my, software in the world. I know we're all <laughs> almost Wally, and I can't wait because those chairs were amazing. <laughs> I think my hate comes from I never I don't even have an iPad or an iPod or I mean I have an iPod I don't have an iPad. So when I would go to the restaurants and I'd see these three-year-olds, I'd be like, can you, can you adopt me? Cause, is that <laughs> right. <laughs> I know, like an iPad. It's so. like I had to live with a cracked screen on my iPhone for like <laughs> six months, but my kid has like a brand new stinking iPad. I don't really know what that's about. <laughs> with the waterproof case. With the yeah, it's got a damn OtterBox on it. So yeah. um, when it comes to parenting like in your home um, and in your marriage, uh, has it really affected your, has anybody had like a total like marriage change once you started having kids? Like I think especially when they're young, did you kind of go all child centric at first? Oh yeah. I think you absolutely alienate your friends for a little while. Oh yeah. And yeah, that's and, true. And even, yes. You know, even though they come back, um, they don't really come back until they have their own kids and they're like, oh snap, I totally understand what happened yeah. to you. You know, and then I think that I think other people having kids strengthens your friendships, but it's not until then because for a yeah. while there you're so focused on it. But every now and then, and, th and the problem is you kind of burn bridges up front, you know, where you just kind of stop talking to friends. But then after like oh four to six week period or something, you're like, I need to get out and consume as much alcohol as my body can metabolize. <laughs> and you're like, what are you doing tonight? Oh, you don't call me for four to six weeks, and now all of a sudden you want to go out. <laughs> yes, that's what's happening right now. I've exactly. had the opposite experience. I'm like, we we had uh, kids at a young age, and all of our friends were like, well, we'd invite you, but, you know. And we're like, <laughs> we're still, like we can still get a sitter and go out, and it just, it gets, you know, so there are different stages. When you're single, single people hang out, and when you get engaged, 
that's when it starts to change. Yeah. When you get married, that's when it changes even more because well, those are our married friends. They're going to go home tonight and they're going to you know, have missionary style sex and they're boring. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like, and then it's like, those are our friends with kids. Like you can't invite them anywhere. So it's like, and you're like, if you have kids, you've probably seen the commercials where they're like, the guy's trying to watch the game at his friend's house, but they've got kids and he screams cause there's a great play and you know, you woke the baby. So shut up. Right. <laughs> and, and so that's how it is for single people. They look at, or people without kids look at people with kids and they're like, we could have a lot of fun if those kids weren't around and then all of a sudden you, you take a back seat. But once they have their own kids, like we're in a, we're in a different situation now because we look at our friends and they're like, you know, they, they've got little kids and our, we've got a 13 year old, almost 14 year old. So we're like, let's go out. We have a baby built in babysitter. We're going out. And they're like, we can't today. We, we've got, and now we're like kind of like, you know, lifting our nose up at them. Cause we're like, well, you can't go out. Like, get a sitter what's what's the big deal you know so it's well, that's come- one thing i've tried to pass on i'm kind of in the same situation with you david where the wife and i we got married and we were gonna like wait a couple of years before we started having kids and we ended up right out of the gate bam pregnant and a bunch of our friends you know who even got married didn't really end up having kids until later on uh you know one just had their first kid another one's just pregnant and and the, the one part, bit of information I'm passing on to these people now as I get to be the mentor father figure to these guys is I'm, I'm telling you, you have to make the time to still be yourself. It's really easy to get wrapped up in being I'm Ella's dad, I'm Ella's mom. And you really have to take time to be, okay, I'm Matt, I'm Brandy, I'm that person's wife, I'm that person's husband, and I'm that person's friend. And that's the one bit I'm trying to pass on to everybody as they start going through pregnancy is, is really hammer home that, uh, that you have to take time to be yourself. And so I'm starting to get that through. And now that, you know, like I said, my one friend is just had their kid. They're only maybe six months old. And they're, they're coming to me. They're like, yeah, I can see how you get really wrapped up into that kid. Not that that's a bad thing, but sometimes you've got to pull back or else you start to lose yourself. Well, it feels like prison. I mean, at some point you're like, you've invested so much in the kid that you actually shut everybody else out and you stop. I mean, I, I know stories and firsthand experience, you know, not bathing, does, can't leave the house, can't go get groceries because it's just too much. And it's like, it's not, we have three now. So I laugh at like, you know, a friend has one kid and they're like, Oh, it's so hard. I'm like, (laughs) (laughs) like, you know, nothing, Jon Snow. (laughs) We go down to two kids and we're like, Oh, this is so much easier. So it's like, (laughs) yeah. Wait, how do you go down to two kids? Play dates and left <laughs> uh, yeah, in the woods. in the woods. Whatever. I mean, just, you know, right. yeah. Like getting out of that baby phase. It's so great though because, um, especially when they start getting more independent and playing with each other, because it allows you to turn off that whole like asexual zombie just happen to be living together relationship that you have with your spouse. Because that's how it was for us. Like, I mean, there wasn't anything romantic about the fact that we weren't bathing, we hadn't slept in months, and there's like babies in our bed. So that's that wasn't a marriage. It was just sort of like we were two caretakers of little things. And then once they get older, like you kind of resurface into this really cool like. I don't know, almost like second honeymoon of type thing where you can oh, like yeah. be like, oh yeah, you know what? You are way more attractive than I remember you like a month ago. Um, you took a shower. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. I mean, because for a certain period of time, you know, it, it is all about that. But then all of a sudden there's just like this, you know, this ray of light that shines through and you're like, oh my God, we, we've been held captive by this tiny idiot for like the last, you know, God knows how long. And you know, there's another human being next to me, not just not just my assistant manager and managing the household. Yeah, <laughs> which is essentially what it is. I mean, you're 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 keeping this child alive. Do you guys have a division of labor in your household? Like, are there mom jobs and dad jobs? And that's not to say that it's like a um, a gender thing, but more like, do you have a hard limit of shit you won't do? And does your wife have a hard limit of shit that she just Wait. won't do? Nope. We have a small split. There's never been anything I wouldn't do. I always changed diapers, always uh, cleaned up and puke, always got up, you know, when it was time to get up. The only thing that I've done exclusively since our both our girls were born was I've given the baths, all the baths and now the showers. But 
all the bats, and my thought was, I'm going to take this job because I'm not going to be able to do that forever. So this will be our thing, and I know my time is now limited on that job. But other than that, we split we split everything 50-50. There's no There are definitely tasks for us that we, like, uh, you know, there are tasks for us that, like, Audrey hates uh, grocery shopping, and – I kind of like it. Like I like knowing what food I'm buying, where it comes from and, and all that stuff. So consequently our kids are like, you know, they're pissed when dad goes shopping cause dad doesn't bring home, you know, the, the cookies and all that stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I grew up, I grew up the son of a type one diabetic. So we had sugar, don't get me wrong, but like our meals were fairly strict you know, and we would sneak instead, you know, but the, uh, the grocery shopping for me is the only thing where she's like, would you please do that? Otherwise I, you know, it's shit has to get done, you know, and you can either be like, Oh, I'm not going to do that. I remember growing up, somebody that I knew was uh, sweeping and the neighbor kid said, that's a woman's job. And I was like, <laughs> it's a job. Like, I don't know where that even comes from. And that's how I look at it. Like, this is a house, and regardless of who's home, you know, shit has to get done, you know? Yeah, yeah. See, I'm kind of the opposite when it comes to grocery shopping. And, and our division of labor is, is completely different because I do essentially everything. I'm not kidding. My wife would actually vouch for this. I do the cooking. I do the cleaning. I do the laundry. I do the dishes. I do pretty much everything. But when it comes to the going grocery shopping, I actually texted my wife while she was at work grocery shopping one day and I said you know what I don't know why they tell you not to go grocery shopping hungry because you get home with some awesome shit mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and lots of it <laughs> yeah I think um, I won't do homework that's my husband's job like handling the homework um, I'm, Actually, I have I so much rage yeah I have rage I can't help with homework <laughs> I have rage issues but um, he does that but I do most of like the showering type sort of things but yeah like my hard limit is definitely definitely homework. The, um, my wife's aunt has this phrase that she uses: "blue chore and pink chore," and it's the most infuriating thing I've ever heard in my life. But still, <laughs> that kind of breaks down in our house in a little bit. Like I'm always the one taking out the garbage; she's always the one cooking. But that's a good thing because I, I can't cook to save my soul. Uh, but there, there's still that breakdown, and you know we still joke about it. Like I'll get out to gas her car, and she goes, "Oh, blue chore." Uh, but there are still those couple of things where it's like, okay, that's the thing Matt does, mostly because the dumpsters in the apartment complex are really high, and she can't reach them. See, there's no blue chores at all in my house. We, my wife had uh, a birthday last month, and my parents and I went in and bought her a bike for her birthday. And we got it the day before, and we were trying to figure out, like, where do you hide a bike? And my mom's like, what do you, what do you want to do with it? Do you want us to keep it? And I said, no, I'll just put it in the laundry room. She'll never discover it. <laughs> <laughs> what she will admit is true. I do all the laundry. But my mom was like, ouch. Yeah. Um, what about, like, I, as soon as I have two boys and a girl, and as soon as the boys started waking up, um, up, I guess is a good way to say it, that became, I guess, a blue chore. Um, handling the morning upness of what was going on in their diapers and underwear. Um, but I'm assuming periods will be a pink chore. Um, have you guys had to have that fun talk yet with your kids? Any of them old enough? I don't even know when that starts. We had that talk the uh, about a month ago, but I wasn't there. Luckily enough, <laughs> uh, I was actually at Meredith Solo's house. Interestingly <laughs> enough, uh, with uh, with Sean. <laughs> Uh, you know, playing uh, playing one of their board games. Uh, it was actually a great night, and we watched the boxing match after that. And meanwhile, here's my wife handling the kid, giving her the talk, hello, and then the other talk. Um, we've pretty much come to an agreement that she's going to handle the things like the bra shopping and the toss tampons through the door as they're going through that moment. We haven't gotten there yet, but we've already kind of come to that <laughs> understanding that you'll, you, you'll just handle that. We, we have three boys, so it's actually like, you know, a similar but converse situation. My, you know, when, when something happens and <laughs> Audrey's like, this is something that has come, has come from you. Because I can't, <laughs> I'm not qualified in this area to give this, you know, this talk. But, um, yeah, the, the talk about, uh, 
Well, I'm not going to go into the actual talk. <laughs> but there are some talks we've had to have about what it's like, what it's like I, to be a man and proper, uh, proper things you should look out for and do and things like that. That it, She's like, this has to come from you. And I'm like, all right, fine. <laughs> I'm actually a little bit upset because when they had that talk, she we tried to have that talk before, and she was always said, nope, not interested. It's like, okay, well, we're not going to force the talk until we actually get there. Well, then they had the talk, and my daughter specifically told my wife, look, you, we, we can't tell Dad we talked about this. She's actually kind of embarrassed that I would be involved in that. That kind of bothers me a little because I want to be the kind of dad where, you know, if she's got a boyfriend that's treating her like shit later on in life, I want her to be able to come to me and like, look, you know, Bob, whatever, uh, was trying to pressure me on this and then I can go and kick his ass, of course. Uh, but I want to have, have that comfortability. And right now, I don't feel like she has it with me. And that really is kind of like... It gives me it gives me the heebie-jeebies a little bit that she doesn't feel comfortable with me with that. I understand. As somebody it. who got the sex talk from her dad, I'm gonna say don't do that. Don't be the sex <laughs> no. talk dad. No. <laughs> Let her be comfortable coming to you with the asshole boyfriend, but don't give her the sex talk. If no, you I didn't. Help it. You know what though? Um, I never I never got the sex talk, so I, I'm not even entirely convinced that my child is mine because I don't know. <laughs> right Should we explain it then right now? Should we take the rest of this time? Well, yeah, this is going up on YouTube later, right? Hey, you know what? David's got the most soothing voice out of the group of us, so why doesn't he just give the talk and be like, okay, come here. I, I've got a video to play you. I can actually say it to you if you guys want. I'd be like, the penis goes in the vagina. You see what a man and a woman love each other outside of a bar. <laughs> David, yeah. get a hold of me afterward. I, I think that's a nice little ditty. I think we could record that. <laughs> I agree. Um, so it is Father's Day this Sunday. I'm sure you guys did amazing things for your wives on Mother's Day. Um, and just in case anybody who is watching this sort of last minute scrabbling, I do have a great gift guide on my site, which is BrittanyHerself.com. But I wanted to go to you guys, first of all, <clears throat> what is like your least favorite? And you know what? This is a safe place. You know, use your words. Oh. You can you can <laughs> fit. What is the worst Father's Day gift that you've gotten? Or just something that you really just hate getting and it's kind of a cliche and it's not really your bag? I mean... Go ahead, Patrick. You first. Uh, the, worst, <laughs> <laughs> the worst gift, um, I guess it would be nothing, would be the worst <laughs> gift. Um, I really haven't gotten any bad ones. Uh, <laughs> Are you getting one right now? Is she is in your Angie lap? sitting right there? Is she in your lap right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, my, my complaint is always our uh, our schools ended three weeks ago or two weeks ago, so the dads in this part of the country get screwed out of all the great stuff that the kids do in school because for Mother's Day they do you know a whole week's worth of activities and they come home with all this great stuff and these packages and everything and then for dads it's like oh yeah mom brought us to the grocery store today because uh, we forgot so here's this card that we just licked and stuck together <laughs> I lucked out. My wife works at a daycare, and she tells me today, make sure you get the kid here early because we're doing Father's Day crafts today. Yes! I'm going to get something. <laughs> yeah, those go away once daycare, the daycare days end, which well, she's the expensive... nine, but my wife works there, so they let her come along just so we don't have to you know, find you somewhere for her. But the expensive daycare, I'll take the trade off. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Mark? Uh, you know, I don't really get Father's Day gifts either, but last week we went to Target because, I mean, it's pretty much the greatest place on earth. Agreed. And we, uh, I, I, we kind of broke off, and I wanted to go. I have to go up and down every aisle and check out the clearance deals just because you never know when you, you might find something you can't live without for, like, up to 75% off. And I came back and started looking around for my, my wife and my son, and, of course, they're looking at cards. I'm like, who are you looking at a card for? Like, for Father's Day. I'm like, wait, you're going to... You're not even going to take the time to go out on your own to a Father's Day card for me? You're going to do it right in front of me? She's like, well, do you want to help us pick one out, like the one that you like the best? <laughs> so, you know, so my idea of a good Father's Day present is get, getting one. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> I mean, because I think the tie, that's like this whole cliche of, like, ties. But what about well, you, dude? I have no you get, tie. Get... I would gladly welcome a tie right now. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> What about you, Dave? Did you get anything that you ever were just like, great? Uh... I don't 
I don't think so, but I think the one thing that I will say is that, like, on, you know, there's a saying, I think my, my parents or somebody told me this a while ago, we're talking about Mother's Day and Father's Day, and I, and I said, like, when is Kids Day? And they go, that's every day. Yeah. And that's pretty much how I feel, is like, you know, we go above and beyond for our kids. Like, we will, if you want to go do something and it's 100 miles away, well, I'll drive you there. You know, I'm driving my son uh, to a basketball shooting camp this summer, and it's in Indiana. I live in the Catskills. Like, it's 11 hours to drive to this goddamn camp, but I'm taking him because he wants to go. Listen, and I don't want to interrupt you here, David, but when you say basketball shooting camp, I mean, are we talking like rifles actually shooting at basketballs? Because <laughs> that would be no. way cooler than if it's just shooting basketballs. No, it's just shooting basketballs. Right. It's nothing okay. special. But, sorry, sorry, go on. But, no, no, but I just, you know, it's, it's the, and when Mother's Day, we experience this too. And you, you, you prep the kids. You're like, don't be assholes tomorrow. It's Mother's Day. <laughs> like, just think about someone other than yourself for like five minutes, and, that, and then the day will be good. And like, they can get through like an hour, maybe two if you remind them. And after that, they're just back to like, I did my thing, and I'm going to go about my day. So, you know, I don't honestly like Father's Day for me is not it's different when I was a kid you know you make something at school you give it to dad and maybe do brunch or something that was it and I just want to be with them and not have them fight or like not have to <laughs> like not have to like be upset like that's all I want and I don't, I don't I'm not a, a particular guy I just want to like hang out I'll play Xbox with them all day if they want but like just don't fight that's all I want but so that's I mean it's not a gift it's just you know, if they could just show some compassion towards one another, that would be an awesome gift. And say, look, I'm not going to ask you to clean your room today. Just, I just need you to like be kind to me. Leave me alone for 30 minutes so I can play with my wife's boobs for a while, and then we'll go <laughs> and go cards. It'll be great. If I could get my youngest to not tell me to suck his ball sack, that would be okay. <laughs> like that's a good Father's Day. You know. Um. Yeah. That kind of like you kind of led right into like gifts that you know we like to get and I feel oh. I feel horrible it being so much like yeah for Mother's Day or Father's Day I'd like to not be with my kids you know the things that make me that mother or father can I just have a day off like can that be my day off so it's kind of weird but um and you already touched on a gift you like what do you think would be like a like the perfect gift Matt um, I've got a whole selection of things that I like to suggest to people. I've actually brought props. First off, hold on, let me see if I can get this. Okay, that's a double-edged safety razor. That's the kind of razor your dad used to shave with. This is kind of like, I, I love using this thing, and I suggest it to dads, uh, mostly because, I mean, this handle is 30 bucks, but the blades, you can get 100 of them for 10 bucks online. It's a great gift for people. I highly suggest it. Uh, if your dad's into cigars... Cigar lighter, that's always a good bet. Um, a great book I've suggested. I've seen you put a bunch of books on your website. BrittanyHerself.com, by the way, cha-ching. Uh, the, uh, the website I want to suggest, or, the, or rather the book I'd like to suggest, uh, is written by Drew McGarry. If any of you read Deadspin, you know his work. He put together this book on uh, parenting in the 21st century called Someone Could Get Hurt. It's brilliant. It's hilarious. It's heartbreaking. It's all of that and more. And uh, I, I bought it and read through it within a day and a half. And it's, uh, it's one of the more fantastic things about uh, parenting, especially being a father. Um, in a generation where we're being constantly told on all sides how wrong we are, um, in, in trying to take solidarity in that, no, I'm pretty sure we've got this down, even though you know we're being told on every side that we're being too easy, too light, too hard, everything in the middle. Um, it's a great, fantastic read, and that's another one, like I said, I'd like to suggest. No coffee mugs. We've got enough coffee mugs. I, I have no real room in my pantry for coffee mugs. Beer glasses? Uh, you know, ta-da. That, that, that's always helpful. Uh, there's places I've seen uh, that have, like, a whole box that's just different types of beer glasses. Um, of course, if your father happens to be an alcoholic, just being there for the every other weekend is gift enough. Uh, but <laughs> I'm just saying, none of the, the chintzy stuff, no ashtrays, no coffee mugs, uh, ties. You've really got to know their style if you're going to get ties. 
Yeah, on the event page, um, actually on the live chat, Ash wants to know, you know, how you guys want to spend your day. They're trying to plan these days for you. So I, my, I'm a, I'm a traditional guy. You know, there's dads who are out there who are like extreme sports guys, and they're like into, you know, snowboarding and mountain biking and getting their balls pierced and meth and like that's not me. I'm like, I'm not that guy. I just, I would love. You know what's great? I would love to do. I, I, I did this with my dad actually for several years. Is golfing, and I know it sounds like old man and whatever, but like golf is perfect because it's one on one time with your kids, especially when they're older. It's one on one time. It's nature. It's being outdoors, even if it is a manicured and you know <laughs> it's not really outdoors. Natural. You're, out, you're not in your yard at least, but no. But it's in a, it's in a nice. It's like Disneyland, right? For kind of type of setting where it's like manicured grass and all that you can smoke cigars have a beer dr recklessly drive golf carts like there's a lot of good stuff that can happen there but golf for me is one of those things where it's like it's a set block of three hours and it's nothing but the two of us together like that's a good day to me I would agree with the golf statement except down here you're gonna get four to five hours just because it's always crowded and slow but Yep, just being outside, if you can convince them to go outside when it's 98 degrees at 10 o'clock in the morning, um, that's always fun. But we always like to do, uh, when we had passes, we'd go to Disney World or something, and that's always fun. And this weekend I'm looking at it going, hey, uh, Superman's coming out, so let's go see that. That would be fun for us to do. But nothing nothing special. I like to spend time with the kids. I'm at work out, out of the home uh in an office all week so you know we'll just play some board games or if the weather's nice go try to do something outside but yeah golf is a good good idea but if it's too hot then you gotta find something indoors <laughs> absolutely if you I mean you know like I'm not a big golfer but my kid will amuse me for a while and we'll, she'll take me fishing and we'll, we'll go fishing for a while you know she'll eventually she'll give up and that's fine because I'm terrible at it too uh, but you know we'll do that we'll go get a pizza, and then we'll sit home and watch Doctor Who. What's wrong with that? That's a perfect day. Absolutely. And I do have I have some props as well, like from some really great sponsors that wanted to offer some great Father's Day gifts for guys as well. I've talked about it before, but crotch gear, you can find them online, <laughs> makes this uh, line of some really fun um, sweatpants <laughs> and <laughs> boxers. Hold on a second. That's my microphone. <laughs> That's your microphone. <laughs> they make them. They're really fun. They come in sweats and boxer shorts, and they're really cute. So that's always a great idea. They're actually on Twitter at CrotchGear and CrotchGear.com. And then also for um, – sometimes I think, like, it's fun just for a moment to remind my husband what his life was like before he was a father because it's like the good old days of, like, having fun and, and stuff like that. So I kind of like to try and get him fun – type toys and I mentioned this is my gift guide but I wanted to show you guys in person um these like little like AR dr I had to say drone because that sounds murdery in the news right now but <laughs> <laughs> sometimes the kids get out of line the same, like. <laughs> so these are super cheap on Amazon and you control them with your iPhone or your iPad or your Android phone so um but they're super fun the kids love them it's crazy affordable just to get like sort of fun things um i think it's fun to just kind of give dads also like an experience like you said whether it be a day of golfing or like tickets to like a concert or a comedy show or any of those things that you just don't get to do anymore because you kind of have like money allocated to go to kids all the time so kind of a fun thing um to do and i feel obligated also to take a moment I ran a giveaway on my site for the Perfect Father's Day gift, and I do have to announce that. Tammy Kelly, congratulations. You won the $100 Yay. Amazon gift card. Yay. So if you hurry and you have Prime, it should get here in time. So I will send you an email after the show. Um, we are kind of running out of time, but in closing, I wanted to put the boys on the spot because we are largely a women-based show and ask you, what is the one thing that you would like to tell your wife or your partner? Um, something that you would like them to know? Because I think sometimes, uh, especially when you have kids, you just don't have time to say like those those things to them. So what would you like your partner to know? Patrick? Got it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you for 
helping me to become a dad because becoming a dad has been the best thing. I mean, I'm not trying to be sappy, but it Aww. absolutely has been the best thing that's ever happened. And if you see me with my girls, you know, we're like best friends. We hang out and it's, it's pretty awesome. So to my wife, I wanted to say thank you. Wow. Matt? Aww. Go ahead. I'm gonna kind of echo what he said. I mean, <laughs> honest. No, I, and and I mean this in the, in the most honest way. It's it's difficult, you know, to be a parent and uh, and particularly a dad. You know, especially in a situation where you know a dad is just one step away from being, you know, like you know, the worst person in the world. Uh, so to be to have the opportunity to be a good dad not only takes having a you know a, a good solid core that you kind of get from. Uh, from your wife, but also the teamwork that comes from a wife, and so that, so having that base with her, having that trust with her, allows me to do things uh, that might be out of the norm with a kid. Like, you know, oh, you know, you know, she was at work. I took the kid to Waffle House, and we just, you know, scattered, covered, smothered. Or, you know, <laughs> she let me, you know, take the kid, and we you know, we watched Lord of the Rings three days in a row, and watched each movie, and then uh, she watched, let's be watch sure Doctor Who, even though there's some scary bits. Uh, those that's, that's the kind of trust that we need to have with each other and that we have with each other, and that's awesome to have. And so to have that kind of trust with her and to tell, to, for her to allow me to do things with the kid that isn't just, oh, we went to the park, oh, we went to this, we went to that, uh, instead, you know, to say, hey, you know, we went out, we, bought, we built a model rocket together, it was awesome. That's the kind of freedom that I like to have with the kid that she gives me. So you know, absolutely to bounce off what uh, what Patrick said, uh, a big thank you to uh, to letting me be the dad that I'm finding myself to be. Awesome, Mark, you're up. Okay, so I'd be an a hole at this point if I didn't say something somewhat sentimental. <laughs> <laughs> These two guys completely screwed me over. <laughs> so <laughs> I know. I Matt go said lay down trust I'm like, that's how you have <laughs> anal. She's amazing. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> All right, so. Best kind. Are you serious? No. I'm not. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know. No. <laughs> is this your first episode? <laughs> yeah. All right. So I guess what I would say to my wife is, uh, I kind of sort of in an analogy form, I suppose. One of my favorite things is like going into late summer. I don't know if you know, when it starts to get dark a little bit earlier and you get these sunsets, right? Where the whole sky just glows. Like you might not even be able to make contact with the, the sun you might not actually see it but there's just this like orange warm calming glow and it's just the most comforting thing in the world and when my wife smiles I get that same feeling and my son has caused so many of those moments in her life so again I guess just to go along with those guys have said I want to thank my wife for making that possible because she's made me feel that way so many more times than before. So I guess what I'm really saying here is my kid is way better at making that happen than I am. <laughs> I think Jess I'm and they're going to be pregnant by the end. I of think I time. am, actually. <laughs> I I, just, I, we're three down and I'm ovulating, I think. All right, David. <laughs> <laughs> David, it's your, you're the last hope to make this thing awful. Come All on. Right. <laughs> so I'm going to pivot here a little bit. <laughs> David, you're our only hope. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to pivot a little bit because every day I tell my wife how much she means to me and how much I love her and, and how great she is. So we're almost out of time. And I think the one thing that's important here for us to remember is that we've been on online. For some of you, it's been maybe an hour now. But for a lot of us, it's been an hour and a half. And the thing that I'll, I like to tell my wife, aside from the fact that she's sleeping because I see her G-chat is sleeping, um, is, is that I'm out of beer. So there's that. Thank you. David. I'm there's actually that. we all are. If I'm following the right hand chat over here, all of yeah. us are. Oh, no beer. No beer. No Matt, beer. But David, I, I, me, we're all out. I you oh, know she I knows. Have my some, wife. but it's way over there. Yeah. Yeah. I can't just get up and go, to go get some. But, my wife knows I love her with all my heart, and uh, but I am out of beer. So those, you know, equally competing statements. But you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that sentimental note, um, <laughs> I wanted to go ahead and thank all the dads for joining us tonight. I know from Jess and I and everybody else, we want to say thank you for being such amazing fathers. We obviously 
couldn't do this without you or, um, you know, half of your income or whatever. So, um, <laughs> Why you just know it's a sausage fest. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. So thanks for being so brave and being on with us tonight and answering our questions and everybody who watched live and in the event room will absolutely get to all your questions there as well. Um, I hope you had a great night. I hope you have a wonderful Father's Day and I'd like to thank you for joining us and we'll see you next week. Thanks.